This is MRN Crew Call, brought to you by Hercules Tires. Charlotte Motor Speedway wrapping up with the Coca-Cola 600. When I think of Charlotte, I always think about the NASCAR Hall of Fame. And when I think about the NASCAR Hall of Fame, yeah, it's great all the drivers in there, but I love the mechanics, the engine builders, the crew chiefs that have made their way into the Hall of Fame. Really, it started the inaugural class, Junior Johnson. And while he was a team owner and a successful driver, uh, Junior was pretty handy with a wrench as well. Uh, Dale Inman was in the class of 2012. Um, the uh, iconic crew chief for Richard Petty. Then we added Leonard Wood and Maurice Petty, the engine builder, Ray Evernham and Waddell Wilson. So I love that the NASCAR Hall of Fame includes our crew call kind of guys. And today, well, we're going to talk to a guy who is destined to be enshrined at the NASCAR Hall of Fame as well. Chad Knauss joins us. I'm Steve Post, pit road reporter for Motor Racing Network. And this is Crew Call presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Chad Knauss, the seven-time championship-winning crew chief, 82 wins, and an incredible career at Hendrick Motorsports. He continues as the vice president of competition, and we'll catch up with Chad here in just a moment on Crew Call. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Crew call rolling along and joining us now, the vice president of competition from over at Hendrick Motorsports, Chad Canals. Hello, Chad. Welcome into Crew Call. Hey, glad to be here, Postman. It's good to, good to catch up with you, that's for sure, and I appreciate you taking some time. Chad, I, I, I struggled. I can't imagine how much you struggled. When you announced you're coming off the pit box last year, um, I'm like, this is not going to work. This is not going to work at all. <laughs> and you made it all the way to the Rolex 24, which was before the 500, before you got back on the pit. Okay, so we're a few months in. How is this working for you? It's, it's definitely a challenge in a lot of different capacities. Uh, not... Not calling the cup races um, and being, you know, intimate with one specific car number like I have been my whole life. It's it's hard because you have your crew, right? Like you've got by crew. I mean, you mean you, the guys and the gals that you work with on your specific car number, your driver, you're like thick as thieves, right? You really got that bond and you got to be into one another to make that thing work. And now with my new job, man, it's, it's really big, right? It's really, really big. It's a lot of folks. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of different things going on. So um, I miss that element probably more than anything. Um, you know, the other thing that's, I've always kind of prided myself on being a guy to complete things and be a finisher, right? Like get this done, get that done, move to the next problem, get that done, get this done. And a lot of the things that, that I'm working on now are, you know, shoot, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, two years down the road, you know, the, the results of what it is you're working on, you don't get that immediate satisfaction. So it's, it's a little different from that respect, but man, I'm telling you, it's, it's a blast. I love it here at Hendrick Motorsports. As you know, uh, the, the crew chiefs that we've got are just phenomenal. They've got great teams. We've got a great group of drivers. Uh, so it, things are really good. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit because I do love the crew chiefs you have. They're, they're, they're just all right on top of their game. When you look at Alan with chase, you've got Greg Ives. Uh, what, he's the Riddler, right? He's, <laughs> he's, the, he's the Riddler. Yep. Uh, we had him on a few weeks ago. He's going to school to be a doctor when he decided to go racing. Yeah. Well, when you have that kind of mental brain power capacity, he could do both probably pretty easily, honestly. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You got Cliff over there with Kyle Larson, and your new find, your new ad was Rudy Fugel, which is great coming in. With it. What's the dynamic between the four of those guys and 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 why that's working apparently so well with you guys? Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. You know, Rudy was my first hire. Talk about a successful one on that one, right? I got lucky yeah. on that. <laughs> um it's it's really interesting. Obviously, we've got a lot of young guys, uh, Greg and Cliff both worked with me as engineers uh, for years, both. And so they kind of understand me, which I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Alan and I have worked together for, you know, shoot, two decades now, right? So for for quite some time. So he understands me and I understand him. 
And then bringing in Rudy, who's got so much to offer um, from his history with William and what his abilities are. Um, working with these guys is really great. I think that the communication level, um, they have active communication. Like it's not just single lined or single thread as they discuss race car topics or strategy things, whatever the, the, the thing may be that's at the top of the list that day, it's, it's complete active communication. And that's something that I don't think that we've ever really had here at Hendrick Motorsports at this level. Not that we didn't always share notes and we didn't always have open books because we did, but there was always, it was always maybe one-sided. Hey, can you give me your shocks? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. But there maybe wasn't as much dialogue with what, what was in those shocks, what the magic was with those or how this worked or how your aero body build was done or what have you. Now these guys are talking about, um, you know, the theory behind their decision making, their philosophy and how they approach. And I think that's fantastic. Right. That's great. When you've got a guy like Alan, who's got a lot of years being a crew chief, Greg, who's got a lot of years being a crew chief, Cliff, who's fairly young, uh, Rudy, who's managed, you know, all of KBM which, I mean, we can only imagine how difficult that was, right? So <laughs> it's, he came in with a lot of cool things, and these guys are great. You guys have a neat setup over there. A couple of years ago, we were able to do a tour at Hendrick Motorsports, and you kind of, at one time, it was the 2848 shop and the, uh, the uh, what was it, 88.5 shop. Yeah, now you've got everybody in. Uh, this crew chief pod, to me, is fascinating because I can't imagine – the the dialogue that happens just in and out of offices as as, as guys are doing things yeah honestly you've got to put that on marshall carlson um his leadership has been fantastic he obviously mr hendrick wanted us all to get together and you know look you're going to be stronger together better together rick has preached that since the day that i started at hendrick motorsports in 1993 um but marshall really had this vision of this this collision area and we call it the team operations center and inside there, each team has its respective engineering room. And this is where the crew chiefs live. Like they live in there with their engineers. They all have offices um, on the top floor of this, this area. They don't ever go in them. They're never, the lights are never on. They're always in the engineering rooms with their engineers. And what that does is that creates a lot of communication because they're walking out of that room, going to the out to the shop, they run into one another. They have these, these collision conversations that just happen organically because of what Marshall put in place. And it's it's worked out really well. It was clunky as could be at the beginning. You know, it was, it was really difficult because we had never been in an environment quite like that. And, and honestly, it's really nice. It's, it's really cool to see. It's great for me. I can walk out of my office and I know I can go find one of those guys really pretty quickly. Um, we can, I, if there's a topic that we've got to discuss, I can grab them. We can pull into another room real quick, make a decision, bang, zoom, we're done. We've got it implemented. We're making things happen. And that's, that's the beauty of what we've got going on right now. It is. It really is neat. And it's a, uh, it's just, it's, it, it's fascinating. It really is to see how well it's working and, and now the results. And when we look at Hendrick Motorsports, I, I forget who it was, what the context was. We were talking about it and, and Hendrick going through an era where you guys struggled just a little bit. And I said, well, wait a minute. When you lose Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, Mark Martin, those guys, when you lose Ray Evernham, when you, Steve LaCarte, guys like that, uh, that has got to be a huge challenge to rebuild with those Hall of Fame people that have left there over the last five, do half dozen years. No, oh, for sure. And again, I'm not going to, the driver talent is huge, right? Sure. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. But it's, it's in the people, right? The people and how they work and the systems and the procedures and the accountability and all of those things. And that's what's really come into play at HMS since we put all these guys together. But the thing is, is when we first put everybody together, we didn't, it just didn't go as well as what we needed to. And, and we lost some performance, right? You can take some high level people that operate very, very well and you start to put them together and things can get muted pretty quickly. Um, and that's, that's unfortunately what happened. And we're, we're, we're getting our systems put in place now to where it's operating the way the vision showed years ago. It just took a little bit of time to get there on top of, you know, Jimmy Johnson, on top of Jeff Gordon, on top of those guys exiting the company, right? So, um, but what, what we've got right now with the, the partners that we've got from sponsorship standpoint, the players that we've got here at HMS, you know, when you look at Hendrick Motorsports and you look at the engine department, the pit department and all of these things and what everybody's doing to, to operate at a very high level, 
man, there's a lot of desire and a lot of passion right now. And it's, it's, it's just fantastic. It's fun to be a part of. One of the, one of the neat things, uh, I, I, I'm part of a running club over in Kannapolis. And one of the guys that I run with is one of your graphic designers works with the sponsors, works with the partners over there. And, and I, that struck me in talking with him. He has the same desire, like, like after a race, when you guys win or whatever happens, I, I, I'm over there Monday night and he's like, yeah, we won this. And, And it's amazing to me, the levels of, the departments and the desire that it takes because one one thing being off and you got you, you struggle and it's got to be on point and and that's across the board over there from from operations to every other aspect of it oh you're 100 correct and look everything that you do in life is about the people if you want to be successful hang out with successful people and, and that's that's how it works right and if you've got somebody next to you and they're not they're not pulling their weight or contributing i know why right? What is it they need? How do you work with them? How do you get them in a position to where they can be successful? Um, too many times in life when somebody is underperforming, people just kind of push them away or put them in a corner as opposed to A, finding out what they can do, right? To try to make it to where they can contribute or, or, or B, teaching them, right? To, to do something that's a little bit more of a contribution. So everybody at HMS is is in the mindset that they want to improve. They want to be a part of what we're doing here. And when you do that, and it's magic. And, and, and that's, that's what Mr. Hendrick does with everybody. If you, if you look at how he has managed everybody, he does them all the same, right? Let's work with them. Let's figure out how to make it happen. Let's get it better. How can we improve? Those types of things. That's why he brings people up through the company. That's why the guys and gals that work here have been here for so long and have been so successful. Yeah. Yeah. I think our first conversation this year was with Alan and I didn't, and you just, you just assume, and, and you realize that he has been there 20 years Yeah, man. and which is a great thing because it speaks volumes for him, but it speaks volume for the company as well. It's, it's, it's yeah. amazing. It really, truly. Is. Yeah. It's, it goes so far. You have Marshall, myself, Jim Wall, Jeff Andrews, our general manager is doing an amazing job. Obviously he's, he has seen so much of this company from so many different angles um, you know, the, the, the group of guys that we've got that are directing us is pretty fantastic. Yeah. As you guys look at competing here and obviously enjoying success, all four cars now with that win at Coda, all four cars now have wins, the, I guess, locked into the playoffs. We know that something could go crazy and, and, and it may end up not being the case. Um, there's, it's gotta be, what's the satisfaction level for you like to see all of your kids, if you will, all of those cars having success? It's mind blowing, honestly. Uh, if, if you would have said we'd be sitting here, was it 12 races into the season and have all four of our cars locked into the playoffs already, I, I wouldn't have believed it. You know, it's, it's, we, we felt like that we were going to come out pretty strong. We felt like that the end of the, the 2020 season was, was good. And we were, you know, had some upward momentum, obviously won the championship. That can be a bit of a distraction, you know, a distraction to the guys that were in the championship hunt. The other guys were running pretty well. So we felt like we were making some gains, We just don't know. Right. And to be able to come out of the gate and run well at every racetrack this year has been just fantastic and couldn't be prouder of all the guys, and, you know, just Greg with his two victories and, you know, one of them being at Richmond, which, I mean, it still blows me. I don't know how we pulled that off. Right. So it's just really pretty amazing what these guys are capable of doing when they put their minds to it. I can't be prouder of them. Everybody at Hendrick Motorsports is working so hard. Our pit department, our pit crews are kicking it on pit road. You know, the, 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 the guys and the gals that are servicing the cars and building them week in and week out, the details are high, you know, it's just, it's really good stuff. We live in such a weird time with the pandemic and, and that I think what it made it the, the, the aftermath of Dover when you guys went one, two, three, four. Yeah. And to gather everyone, I'm assuming on Monday out in the courtyard there, which again, coming off a year and two months of not seeing anybody or everything. Yeah. I cannot imagine what a neat moment that was. Not only the performance on that Sunday, but just to have the band, the group all back together for, for a celebration. Coolest photo ever, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is. The timing could have been better, right? Obviously, just a couple of days prior, we find out that you, you know, the government is relaxing the the, co- the mask restrictions on outdoor activities. So all that was working out really well. And then to be able to go up there to Dover and compete and, and perform the way that we did. I'll, I'll be honest, I wasn't in Dover. And I was, you know, I had my monitors up and my headset on and I'm, you know, messaging the guys, you know, all of these things. And 
about halfway through the race when we kind of took control of it uh, through one through four. As I was sitting back, I like, man, how, how are we going to pull this off? Like how, you know, what's, what do we need to do to be, make sure we're capitalizing and we're preventing any issues and so on and so forth. And I was just so proud of the way that we were able to come down pit road, first through fourth, leave first through fourth, didn't have a loose wheel. The, the drivers raced really aggressively and hard with one another. None of them laid over for each other. They were trying to pass each other. Um, didn't have any, any contact, you know, so they were very respectful of one another. The, the crew chiefs were exchanging information about we're doing this tire pressure, that tire pressure. Hey, the caution hasn't come out yet. looks like we're going to have green flag pit stops. What are you thinking? The, those guys at that level communicating in that type of situation, I could never have been prouder because that's exactly what we're trying to strive for. And look, we, we want these guys to go out there and beat one another, right? That's the, the key. But man, they, they, they're really hashing it out alongside one another, which is just beautiful to see. I used to, one of the first gigs I had was with Robert Yates and Robert was always hesitant to go with a second car because yeah. Robert Robert's theory when he had the 28 car was there are some weeks where you would never lose with the 28 car you win. He said, when I have a second car, that means I'm guaranteed to not yeah. win every week. Uh, and, and I set that up with the challenge of, um, the, the the second through fourth place finishers there and one pit crew beat another pit crew off of pit road. I mean, that sort of thing, that dynamic, how managing that dynamic and keeping everybody motivated that is it a challenge or is the Hendrick way uh, over, over, over uh, supersede that, I guess. Well, right now it is. How's that No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> if, if poor Kyle goes out there and finishes second for the rest of the season, every week, you know, they may wear pretty thin on them. Right. But we'll just, I don't think that's going to be the case, obviously, but, uh, you know, William Byron, who is a very intelligent young man, he came up to me after we finished uh, one through four and over. And he said, man, I could not be prouder of what's going on. And he said, iron sharpens iron. Right. And that's exactly what's going on. Like these guys are making each other better on pit road, on the racetrack, from the crew chiefs to the engineers, like these teams are making each other stronger because one team goes out and wins, the other team wants to win. And, you know, they're figuring out why. Why is that team running well and why am I not? And I think that's a huge factor of what's going on right now. There's a ton of desire to be competitive out there. And, you know, Ken Howes told me a while ago, he said, you're only as good as your worst finisher, right? You're when you're in this type of position. Yeah. So, walking and rolling out of Dover. I was like, that's not bad. That was, that was, that was pretty good. We'll take that one. Okay. You know, unfortunately we had a car in Coda finish 11th. Right. So, you, you know, you, you really don't get to, to celebrate the highs quite as much. And Gordon told me when we were talking about it, you know, when you step away and you're in this environment, you can have really good days, right. But you're never going to have that great day to where you win and your bad day is probably not necessarily as bad as what it could be. You're going to kind of float in that top five, you know, top 10 range every week. And that's kind of where, where we sit emotionally. Yeah. Neat stuff. That's for sure. With yeah. all four cars with wins locked in, what does the summer months look like as you guys prepare for the playoffs? What, what's the summer month looks like as far as, you know, points, stage points, wins, take chances, experiment. How do you, how do you approach that? Yeah, all of the above. I feel that um, as a company, it's our responsibility to go out there to try to win every single week. And it's it's our responsibility um, and commitment to our partners to, to do that. And we've got a lot of great racetracks coming up, some new ones that are really exciting, uh, some old ones that we haven't been to in a while, right? So I think that there's a lot of opportunity for us to, to go out there and capitalize on that. And again, try to improve to, to so when we get to the playoffs, we're ready to rock and roll. Um, you know, our goal is to go into the playoffs and, and have all four cars show up in Phoenix to try to win the championship. Um, you know, that's, that's going to be a tough, tough one, but man, who says we can't, right? Yeah. Yeah. If Dover was any indication, that's for sure. Chad, I want to take the last couple of minutes just to kind of go a little bit off racetrack with you. You joined the Twitter verse, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's its own nightmare. But one of the things you've done is you've shared a little bit of your personal life. Um, and your, and your son, oh my gosh, I'm telling you what, he just with the hair and everything like that, 
yeah. fatherhood. I mean, could could you imagine pre-fatherhood Chad and what dad Chad is doing now? Could you imagine the difference in your life? Man, I was hoping it was going to come. I'm going to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, I really was. I, I, I probably did my, my, my things a little different than most folks, right? Most guys, you know, most people, 25, 35 range, you know, Hey, let's get married. Let's start having a couple of kids do that type of thing. And I wasn't in that headspace in that period of my life. I was really just wanting to, to do the best I could for my career. I wanted to win championships and win races. And, 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 you know, when the time came for me to, to start to think other ways, I identified with it. Right. And, and, and I was there, but being able to step back away from the racetrack a little bit, um, you know, not travel every week and be with my son and my daughter and Brooke. It's just, it is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, my son, I love it. I went to Coda last weekend and I'd been home for quite some time. And when I was saying goodbye, Kipling cried and he's like, I don't want you to leave. And I'm like, man, you can't do that too much because that's going to be <laughs> that's a tough thing to swallow. Right. I'm really going to struggle when my daughter gets to that point, but I love being a dad. I love my kids. Um, I, I really, really enjoy it, embrace it. Um, you know, I, I want, when I was young, I said, I wanted to be the best parent I possibly could. And I want to be able to do everything I could for my children. So that's why I put my career first, to try to get to myself to a position where I could provide for them and, and make sure that I was in the right mental space. And, and right now, man, I know I get made fun of because people say I'm getting soft and, and whatnot. Dale Jr. made fun of me, you know, for being an old meanie before, and now I'm, you know, Ray of Sunshine or whatever he said. I don't remember exactly what it was, but man, it's this is where I'm at. I wanna I want to finish off my life in the in the good light. That's my plan. Well, as a as as a dad of now college age kids, hang on, it'll go fast. Uh, <laughs> those 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 moments, uh, the, the 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 crying goodbyes, they'll never end, and they will always be brutal. But yeah. there always comes with a Sunday night when you return back home too. So yeah. <laughs> it always, it's, it's it's always followed by that. Final question for you, Chad. The tour uh, gets a chance to go to California again, back to Sonoma, uh, road course racing. Yeah. Um, a, are you making the trip? And B, at one time I knew you were quite the wine connoisseur. Is that uh, <laughs> is, is 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 that still part of is still part of your life and still part of your trip if you're going out there? I love I love good wine. I really do. Um, maybe sometimes a little too much. Um, you know, um, but but yeah, absolutely. I'm a big wine connoisseur. Unfortunately, I'm not going to Sonoma this year. Um, a lot going on here at HMS, uh, was gone last weekend. So Jeff Andrews is going this week. Um, but we're, we're, we still indulge. I just had a bit of a shipment showed up here maybe a month and a half ago before it got too hot. So, so yeah, we've, I've still got all my wines. Good for you. Yeah. You'd given me years ago when I was out there, you give me some advice on a couple places to go and they were on point as a, as a very novice wine appreciator, I guess it is not a connoisseur. Uh, I appreciate it. I really do. I, I enjoy a glass of wine, but uh, my palate's probably not similar uh, in that, um, in that uh, just, I don't have quite as much experience or depth to it. That's for sure. Well, this is, this is what I learned about wine a long time ago. And I learned it honestly from Randy Dorton. Okay. If it tastes good to you, it's good wine. <laughs> yep. Yep. Period. That's all that matters. If you're enjoying it and it, that's all that matters, you know, it, it, it can be expensive, it can be moderate, it can be cheap. doesn't matter. As long as you're enjoying your wine, you're enjoying the situation. That's all that it's about. Well, I enjoy a fine glass of wine and I enjoy our conversation here today, Chad. It was like a throwback. We used to do NASCAR performance live where you and I would co-host with Larry McReynolds. And yeah. honestly, that's what I've had envisioned to do with Crew Call, to, to keep it a garage only based one. So glad we got a chance to reconnect and uh, wish you continued success over there at Hendrick Motorsports. Thanks, Postman. I appreciate it, buddy. Good, good talking with you today. There we go. Chad Knauss joining us here on Crew Call. Sir. Are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top nine miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. 
as we talked about with Chad, the NASCAR Cup Series is going road racing. In fact, the Xfinity Series is going road course racing as well. Cup Series is out at Sonoma. The return to California. Love California racing. And it's good to have NASCAR back out in wine country at Sonoma. And the Xfinity Series, they'll be at Mid-Ohio for a big Saturday afternoon show with the Xfinity Series. And Motor Racing Network is going to have you covered from Mid-Ohio. In fact, Motor Racing Network, a pair of races from Mid-Ohio coming up on Friday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern time. It's the Dawn 150 for the Arkham Menard Series at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Complex. And that Xfinity Series race, the B&L Transport 170 at Mid-Ohio. That'll take place Saturday afternoon, MRN airtime at 1230. Make sure you've tuned us in. And of course, go to MRN. You can get our entire broadcast schedule. And there's even reminders on there so that you know every time Motor Racing Network comes to the track. Our friends at PRN have all the coverage from the Toyota Save Mart 350 out at Sonoma. So a big road course weekend on the docket this weekend for NASCAR. We appreciate Chad Canals taking some time out. He's the vice president of competition over at Hendrick Motorsports. But more important than all of that, we thank you for joining us here this week on Crew Call, presented by Hercules Titans.